Hello and welcome to this latest video in the OCR GCSE Computer Science series. Uh, before we start, have a look at the three images on your screen and see if you can think of any link between, uh, between those three images. What's a common theme that is happening there? Pause the video, have a think around that one before you move on. So this is lesson number two, programming constructs of the uh, OCR GCSE Computer Science Unit 2 series. This lesson sits within the programming fundamentals section of Unit 2, so this is what I'm calling Lesson 2, uh, Programming Constructs. By the end of this session, we're going to understand what the three programming constructs are. So that is sequence, uh, selection and iteration. We're going to understand how those can be used to create basic computer programs. And then we're going to be able to identify those in either programs or pseudocode written by other people. So for me, the link between those three images is that they all involved people doing the right tasks, but in the wrong order or the wrong sequence. Um, just like the uh, the examples on the board, a computer program is it's very important that the tasks that need to be undertaken happen in the right order and in the right way. The cake on the first slide was being eaten before it was baked. The door was trying to be walked through before it had been opened. And just like those, our computer programs will go very, very wrong if we undertake even the correct actions, but in the wrong, uh, wrong way. Now that links into our programming constructs for today of, well, how do we create our computer programs in a way that is both efficient, but also going to work? So there are three basic programming constructs. These are sequence, selection, and iteration. These are ways of building computer programs, and we need to understand what they mean. Over the course, you'll use each of these a lot. Um, this lesson is going to look at these three. So uh, we'll move on to those. Um, and by the end, you should understand exactly what those uh, constructs mean, what they look like, how we would draw the pseudocode for them, um, or the OCR exam reference language. So sequence is nice and straightforward. Um, every instruction always takes place in the same order. We always run line number one, we always run line number two, and then we always run line number three. So sequencing is probably the most commonly used programming construct. It is the construct where every instruction always takes place in the same order, regardless of what's previously happened. Now, if we think about something like brushing our teeth, the, uh, you know, the using the toothbrush, putting the toothpaste on the toothbrush, rinse the toothbrush, you know, those things always happen. There's no scenario where we think, well, if it's a Friday, don't use toothpaste. Or um, if it's after six o'clock, don't bother brushing them at all. You know, when we brush our teeth, that always takes place in the same way, in the same sequence. And that's the same in a computer program. So if we look at these two examples, uh, you know, these lines of code always happen. The code on the left is to draw a square in turtle. Now, if we want to draw a square, we go forward, left, forward, left, forward, left, forward, left, forward, left. And if we want to draw a square, we always do that. We always repeat that in the same way. On the right hand side, print, please enter a number, number equals input, and then number equals int number to convert it to an integer or a whole number. That both of those programs are using sequencing. All of the lines always take place and they always take place in that order. So pause the video at this point. Um, I'd like you to make sure that you've got a definition of sequencing down. I'd like to list down three examples of computer programs that might use sequencing. Now to do that, I would probably use OCR exam reference language. Write a basic program that uses sequencing. Then choose one of those and create that in Python. Now, if you're using a book at the moment, you could print that off and annotate it. If not, just make sure you get the computer program in. So pause the video and undertake activities one, two, and three. Our next programming construct is selection. Now that means that certain lines of code only run if something else is true or if a certain condition is met. Basically, that means an if statement. If this happens, do this. 
So we use selection when we want to make our program slightly more complicated. We don't always want to do the same tasks. We don't always want to undertake the exact same activities for every user. We want to check if something is true before deciding whether to run a line of code or not. Now we can see our picture example. If you're in the front row queue, go here. Else, go in the other queue, the queue for the other, the other seats on that roller coaster. Now this allows us to personalize our program and make it much more complicated. Only do this if this previous thing has happened. So two examples here. If number greater than 1 million, is it 10 million? Um, don't be silly, that is too high. Else print, that seems sensible. We only print, don't be silly, if the person's entered a really high number. If food equals kebab, say something about liking kebabs. Else print, I'm hungry. Whenever we think about selection, you're just looking for an if statement. Now an if statement is the same in pseudocode, OCR exam reference language, and in Python. So if you're ever asked to identify in an exam the example of selection, just look for the word if. So the same activity as before, but this time with selection. I'd like you to make sure you've got a definition down. I'd like you to write three examples using pseudocode or OCR exam reference language. I'd then like you to pick one of those and program it in Python. OK, um, for example, you could ask a person's name and if they say Jeff, they get a sarcastic reply, but anybody else gets a friendly reply. Pause the video at this point. Have a go at that activity. Our final programming construct is the most complex, iteration. That means looping through certain parts of the program, either a set number of times or until a condition changes. So I say that iteration is our most complex construct. That is because it comes in two different forms. We have something called count controlled iteration and condition controlled iteration. Now count controlled iteration is a for loop. Loop this for 10 times. Loop this for 20 times. A condition controlled iterative loop is a while loop. Do this while something is true. While it's sunny, play outside. Once it's not sunny, come inside. Now we're going to look at examples of both of those which should make that make slightly more sense. So here is an example of a for loop. We're asking the person to enter the number, so our top three lines would be sequencing. And then on line four and five, we're using a for loop. For x in range zero to number. That means start at zero and go up to whatever we entered as number. Let's say we entered 10. It's going to print out, this is a count controlled loop number one and then two, right the way up to 10. A for loop is used when we know how many times we want to loop the, uh, the, the code beforehand. Now a for loop uh, works in this way. We define the for loop with the word for. We create a new variable called x, which is going to be our loop count variable. That's going to keep track of which loop are we on. We then start counting at zero and we loop until a number. Now that you could just manually put 10 in, so we could say 4x in range 0 to 10. Or we could ask the person to enter a variable of number and use that variable number. We can then use x within our for loop uh, to print out where in the loop we are. So our for loop is going to look something like that. Now you can refer back to the lesson on OCR exam reference, reference language to see exactly how that would then work in the, uh, the OCR reference code. But this example is Python. Condition controlled iteration is different. That's when we don't know how many times we want to loop the code until we start looping. That's our while loop. So while continue equals equals y, so yes, print please enter a number, do something with the number and then say, would you like to continue Y or N? Now, if they say Y, that's going to loop again. If they say Y at the, at the end of that time, it will loop again. And it's going to loop until they say N or in fact anything that isn't a Y. This is useful when we don't know how many times we want to loop. 
We don't know how many times a player might want to play our game. They might want to play once, they might want to play twice, we don't know. They might be really bored and want to play 10 times. We choose a while loop in that scenario. If we knew that our test had 30 questions and we wanted to show each question in order, that would be a for loop because we know there are 30 questions and therefore we need to loop through 30 times. Here's how it works in Python. We need to set the initial value. We need to set continue to y so that the while loop kicks in the first time round. We define as a while loop with the, uh, with the word while, which should go orange if we do that properly in Python. We then need to say if continue equals equals y. Um, the double equals, remember, because we're comparing two things, not setting a value. We then indent everything that we want to be part of that while loop. Um, if you put the colon at the end, it will do that automatically. If you don't put the colon at the end, it's not going to work. So do. So getting towards the end of the three constructs, a final activity of, of this type. I'd like to write down a definition for each of the iterative uh, types. Uh, then you might list three examples where each one might be used. So where might we use a while loop? Where might we use a for loop? Now, if you're struggling on that, jump online and look at some examples. How does Geeks for Geeks teach you a for loop? What, what example program are they making? If you're struggling, do jump online. Finally, I'd like to create a program that uses at least two types of iteration. So the two types we've learned today, a for loop and a while loop. Uh, maybe so that it keeps looping around until a person says their name isn't Jeff anymore, for example. So we should now know the three programming constructs. Sequence, every line taking place in order. Selection, some of the lines taking place if something is true. And then iteration, some of the lines taking place more than once. So take a look at this program. In a second, I'd like you to print screen this computer program and label where you can see all of the examples of the things we've covered today. Now there are at least four, there are definitely four that I can see. We've got our two types of iteration, we've got a bit of sequence, and we've got a bit of selection. So as I said, there's your activity. I'd like you to uh, either create a basic program similar to mine or print screen mine. Then I'd like you to annotate round the outside where you're seeing each of those programming constructs. If you're working in your book at the moment, print that and stick it in. If you're not, you can do that straight into Publisher or Photoshop or InDesign. Pause the video now, go back to the previous slide if you want to get a pr print screen. The answers are coming up in a couple of seconds. So there are our examples. We've got condition controlled iteration at the start. We've then within that got a bit of sequence. We've then got a bit of selection in terms of our if statement. And then we've got some count controlled iteration at the bottom. Now, if you understand this program, you understand all of the programming constructs. In the exam, you might need to define them or you might need to identify them within a piece of uh, Python or OCR exam reference language that's given to you. So slightly harder next activity. I'm now going to show you a programming language that you may not have used. This is PHP uh, querying an SQL database. Now my students, we certainly haven't covered that yet, um, but you should be able to read through the basics of it and begin to think around how it works. So here is our code. Now, as I said, this is a programming language we do not know yet, or you, you probably don't know yet. I'd like you to look through this and think, can you identify any keywords within there? Can you identify any um, constructs that we've looked at today that might signify you maybe understand what is going on here? Now, again, you're going to print screen this. And I want you to annotate it around the outside. Pause the video at this point, go back and grab your print screen uh, and either then print that off or put that into say publisher or word and annotate round the outside any bits you think you maybe understand. So here's the gist. Uh, we're inserting a new student into a database table called students. You'll then notice an if statement. So line three, we can definitely identify selection. If uh, connection query equals 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 false. So it's checking is there an error. 
We're then getting a select, so we're going to go get some more students, and you can then see a while loop. Uh, so we're seeing there some condition controlled iteration. That's scrolling through all of the students in the student table and getting their student ID. So we can see in on uh, callouts three and four um, some condition controlled iteration. Now again, we don't know this programming language, but you do know the keyword while, so you could hopefully have identified that. At the bottom, we're then looking at some count controlled iteration. That's going to scroll through the results and add the new students into a class. Insert into student classes. And we can see there a for loop. Now we know what a for loop is. We know what how that works. And while it looks slightly different because it is a different programming language, it says for x equals zero and then x less than class list length and x plus plus. Loop through starting at x equals zero go until x is less than the class list length and increase x each time. So again, while we maybe don't understand what that code does, we can identify the key programming constructs. Here's your revision map for this lesson. You should be able to do everything on this slide. Pause at this point, check you can, and if not, go back and recap any relevant parts. As always, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please post those either directly onto Google Classroom or into the comments section below. Thank you very much.